Today is going to come out of uh, Matthew chapter 2 and um, verses 10 and 11. And uh, this is talking, this kind of goes with the season, but it's talking about the wise men <clears throat> when they saw the star and they were going to see the baby Jesus. And, and it says, When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts and offerings of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And <clears throat> what that speaks to me is the wise men, they, they, were, they were magi. They weren't um, saved folks, so to speak. They were, um, they were magicians. They were, but, but they saw the star and they recognized um, what, that, that the Savior, the King, had come. They recognized that a king was born. And, you know, when you go see a king, you bring your best. You bring gifts. And, and not because they want blessed or anything like that. It's because they recognize the royalty. They recognize the, um, that there was a king before them. And they gave the best. And, the, you know, everybody knows gold is, is you know, that's expensive. That's, that's the best. <clears throat> and so they, they honor Jesus with their gifts and um, and again not because Jesus needed all that but they gave him gifts to honor him to bless him to show that they recognized that he was the king of kings and we should do that with our offerings as well you know give our best and, and not because we want to get blessed back but because we recognize that Jesus is the king of kings and he is the Lord of Lords so uh, Well, how about we do this? Because you got people who stick their hands up before you say, and it's not fair. Right, right. So you got everybody put your hands down. All right, now, who would like to help take the offering today? And then see, that's how you do it. I still don't know who was first. It was Jasmine. Okay. But see the difference? Yes. Otherwise, it's not fair. Otherwise, they don't know to put their hands up. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for today, Lord. We just thank you uh, uh, just for what you've done for us, Lord. We thank you, God, Lord, that that, uh, that we recognize that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And Lord, we just pray that you just bless this offering and multiply it. And Lord, bless your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Well, glory to God. So glad you made it today. Children, you are, as soon as the offering's taken, you are dismissed to go next door. Hang out with Harold. Learn of all the good things of the Lord. So thankful for our teams that faithfully serve our children every week. Amen. I mean, no, that takes work to serve the children week after week. Amen. That's a ministry. That's a giving of yourself. They're serving the kids. Amen. Well, I got one person that agreed with me. Everybody else that didn't agree just signed up for children's church duty next week. Oh, look, everybody's excited now about those that freely give. Amen. Glory to God. Well, if you have your Bibles this morning, you can go ahead and turn to Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37. And, well, before we do that this morning, You won't have to turn to your Bibles if I give you the sheets I made for you. Sister Deb, will you? You can keep that one. Pass these out. Glory to God. Amen. So how many are happy you made it to the house of God today? Amen. You know, we may be light on people, but there's no accident that you made it here. 
That means God has something for you. Amen? Amen. That means there's some revelation that you're going to get in your spirit this morning that's going to change how you see something. And it's going to cause you to be able to put a building block upon your application of your faith. And you're going to be able to acquire something you couldn't acquire before. You're going to be able to overcome something that maybe you didn't overcome. Maybe you'll be encouraged to face something in a different way this morning. But simply because you decided that the bed was, was not big enough to hold you down. You decided that, you know what, it doesn't matter if I'm tired, it doesn't matter if I don't feel good, it doesn't matter if i got something better to do, the Bible says that I am not to forsake the assembling of myself together, and I actually love Jesus, so I'm going to go hear what he has to say to me this morning. Amen? So you, you got yourself up, you got dressed, and you came to church, hoping you would receive something that God would have. Now listen. <coughs> I got a whole lot of knowledge from reading the Bible through like four or five times a year. Not bragging. Children, you touch that again, I'll break your fingers. <laughs> that was just live streamed all across the world. You're going to think that pastor's me. And where was I? <laughs> Good grief. Yeah, I, I have all this stuff, but guess what? I could preach and teach on just about any subject, but guess how much it effect it would have on you if it's not what God had for you? You would gain just a little bit of information, but you wouldn't get very much revelation. Amen? So it's not so much about having all that, it's about having what God wants so you can get some, how many know revelation changes you? Revelation means it comes alive to you. It's like somebody hits a light switch on and you go, huh, I get it. Amen? So how many are ready to hear what God has to say to them this morning through some revelation? Even if it's something you might have heard before. You know what? I've seen the same tree all my life, but after it was cut down, it looked totally different. And after it was made into a rocker, it looked even more different. And then after the pieces were left over and they were split, they looked even more different. And then when it was in the fire, it looked even more different. Same tree. Sometimes we've got to get past the, I've heard that before, before we can ever really hear what God's saying. Come on, are you with me this morning? And so we're going to talk this morning from the pit to the palace. Somebody might say, I've heard that message. And we're going to talk about from the fire to the glory. We're going to talk about from the mouth of destruction to the place of elevation. Elevation, yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Y'all yeah, pray for me. My body's revolting through some of these changes. And so, we're going to talk about this because if you look at your sheet right there, you can sum up today's message in this one key phrase I started at the very beginning of this. The key is going through. Somebody look at your neighbor and say the key, the key. Is, going is going through. In the right heart. In the right heart. Yeah. But still going through. <laughs> See, we have been trained today. We have, we have sissified everything. They wanted to take Everybody gets a trophy. Everybody's a winner. Everybody's an overcomer without overcoming. And believe it or not, it's creeped into every pore of our society. And this will not be a popular message to some people. That's okay. But God didn't come to take you out of that mess and give you a trophy for standing there. He came to take you through it. You know, and with your natural reaction, some of you ladies, if you were to see a nasty mud hole, and it was muddy, and you were in your good clothes, you wouldn't purposely wade off in it, would you? But what if I told you the only way to get to the other side was to go through it? You said, well, I could go around it. Yeah, but there was, there, there was a million dollars at the bottom of that mud hole you couldn't see until you walked through it. That you were going to need when you got to the other side. I'm here to tell you that God has things for you in your life. And you will never get to your destiny trying to always go around all the obstacles. And sometimes he will show you, we're going to look at some people, 
Sometimes he'll show you what the outcome is. And even though I've seen what the outcome is a lot of times in my life, it hasn't made a lot of difference sometimes when I'm going through something. But then sometimes he don't show you anything. You're just trusting him. And there's, th there's keys to that we're going to look at this morning. But all throughout it, the whole key, if you get nothing else this morning, just look at your neighbor and say, I'm making up my mind that I'm going through. You know, we used to do something down home called four we go four-wheeling, we go mudding, you know. And you had to have your mind made up when you started that you were committed. Because if you were afraid of tearing up your vehicle and you didn't take your, your work, your daily driver down there, if you were afraid of tearing up your vehicle or hurting something, you weren't really committed and you were going to be the first one stuck. Because you weren't going to do what it took necessary to get through to the other side. Now some of you have no idea what I'm talking about and that's okay. But that meant that you were ready to, you were ready to hammer down. You were going to give it all it took even if you bounced off a few things, you were going to get through to the other side. And you know what? There's times in our life that we have to have that same level of perseverance. That same trust. It'll be, per see, you go, today, th through all this whamby pamby stuff, we've lost that perseverance in our society. Mm -hmm. And now we've applied it to religion. And we say, God loves me. He's there for me. He'll take care of it. I'm just going to trust him. And the whole time, he's waiting for you to go through something so you can have the best he has for you on the other side. And you're like, nope. He's going to send his angels and feed me by a brook. I'm not going through. I mean, you know, he didn't have to. You're still going to have to go through it. But really today, it's we, we say it, I can preach it today, but it's almost become a foreign concept because we've had so much of this other stuff. And we're like, I rebuke that. That's from the enemy. I'm not going to go through that. God is for me. He's came to give me life and life more abundantly. The enemy's come to steal, kill, and destroy. This is trying to kill me. No, it's trying to grow you. There's a difference. That's right. Big smile. <laughs> Come on. But how many times, don't raise your hand, have you like, I rebuke that. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It's not a weapon, it's a training. <laughs> He's wanting you to go through it. You can whine about it or you can grow up about it. Right. But see, it all lies in the fact that you have to make up your mind before you ever start, or when you're in the middle of it, sometime in it, you're going to have to make up your mind, I'm going to go through this. <laughs> I'm tired of mucking around. There's better on the other side because God did promise that. He said no season will last forever. He said it's better. And he said I don't put you through something for nothing. And it's going to bring him glory, not you. And you're going to have to have the right heart. And if you will do that, all of a sudden you'll find yourself starting to go through it and he'll be the one doing the heavy lifting in the middle of the muck and mire. But it starts with you having enough perseverance saying, I'm going to go through. <coughs> I'm going to quit trying to get out of this. But I want you to know that God really showed me that is not the first thing that comes to people's mind in today's society. The first thing people want to think of is, how can I get out of this? You know, even if God's dealing with you with some things, Lord, just heal me now, restore me. You know, I've seen God do supernatural weight loss, but it's been because there was no other way out for some people. And then they have everybody lined up, and they're going to have a prayer service for everybody to get supernatural weight loss. I'm not knocking when God does supernatural. Please don't take this the wrong way. But some of those people, God was wanting them to go through some things. I learned some discipline, some self control. Now, gluttony is a sin, and I'm fat, so I'm not gluttony, but there's a difference. And I'm not trying to be ugly this morning. But, you know, if you just, like, I'm waiting for God to supernaturally deliver me. I'm going to extreme. Please don't want to take offense today. You know, God wants to take, you know what, you know what can happen if you would start applying the word of God, you would become disciplined? It would affect every area of your life. 
And the next time some other mountain, you know, you know, overcoming an obstacle as much as weight loss can almost be the equivalent to overcoming drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. and, and the same God can deliver you out of that, can deliver you from that addiction. And he's just as faithful whenever something else comes. It will teach you things that will blow your mind. And when someone comes to ask you, well, how did you do that? Well, let me tell you about my Jesus. Amen. It was impossible in myself. And I'm not talking about it because I'm doing it right now. But, you know, these are all part of those things. Because, but he wants, you to go, he wants you to go through some things with him so that he gets the glory. But everybody wants, you know, everybody that gets their self. The Bible has a lot to say about finances. Anybody figure that out? I mean, a lot. Nobody wants to talk about it, but he, the Bible's plumb, chuck full of it. How to steward your money. If you've been around here, I, I've dropped little nuggets for years. Mm -hmm. I mean, years. He tells you how to steward it, where to put it, what to do with it. You know? Here's a big nugget. The Bible says the borrower slave to the lender. Anybody want to be a slave to somebody? No. Go borrow money if you do. Because you, whether you want to admit it or not, they own you for as long as that loan is going on. Mm -hmm. Pay cash, you own that. You own everything. Mm -hmm. I'm not knocking it if you got a loan. I'm just telling you that the Bible says you'll be a slave and that's how you'll feel until that's done. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. But the Bible has all these things to say about it and tells you how to steward it. And today most of God's people has got themselves in some kind of financial mess. Now God has mercy. He's a merciful God. But everybody's come up, Lord, give me a supernatural debt thing. And he's like, I've been trying to talk to you about this to get you through this and change your habits for a long time. And you ain't listening. And I want to take you through it so I get the glory and you just want me to take you out of it so and, and you're not going to learn anything and nobody's going to get any glory from it. But that's what most, you'd be shocked almost every altar. Somebody, I want a supernatural debt reconciliation where God just delivers me from all my debt. Whosoever can have whatsoever ask of faith and believe, yeah, you can. This also lines up with the word that he gets the glory. Amen. Are you, I mean, so, listen, I'm not talking about uh, something that don't have, I'm talking, this is the mainstream. Nobody wants to talk about going through anything anymore. If you think I'm kidding, there's a million books about the subjects I'm just talking about. There's a million people that was praying all these ways, and God's just saying, my word is chock full of wisdom. Wisdom and faith go hand in hand, and I'm trying to get you to activate it so you can go through it. So that because when we go through something, I'm going to show you in the word today that he gets the glory, and that's what changes nations. Amen. Nobody's going to know how great he is until they see you go through something. And after they watch you go through something, they're going, Woo, that was pretty fantastic. They'll say, Well, if he supernaturally delivered me from debt, they would see that too. Well, they might if he got the glory from it, but guess what? You'd be right back in the same mess in three months anyways because you didn't learn nothing. And then who gets, then who looks bad? Big smile. You got to love me to get to heaven. Come on, I'm telling you. Is this the truth? So Genesis 37 you can go down to the part that's underlined, verse 5. Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. Now, let me tell you. Anybody know the verse that says, cast not your pearls before swine? Mm -hmm. Don't go tell everybody everything God shows you. Not everybody's going to be happy about it with you. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, 99% like of the stuff I share, most people have a negative connotation. They don't mean better. Their faith level just ain't where mine is. I don't mean nothing by it. They just can't receive it. They don't have enough faith. They haven't, they haven't grown that much. And they, they're, they're dealing with me in the seen realm, in the natural realm, and I'm talking about things in the unseen realm. And they can't even relate to it. That's what Joseph's problem was here. He was dealing with things in the unseen realm and trying to tell people that were in the seen realm, and they're like, you little pipsqueak, you ain't, you're our little brother. 
you already been spoiled rotten. Don't be telling me I'm bowing down to you. The only bowing is going to happen is when I knock you on your head. <laughs> and that was about the thought process. <laughs> you don't believe me? Just look what they did later on. So in, jump on down to verse 18. It says, when they saw him afar off, and you can read these at home later, that's why I put it all in here. Before he came unto them, they conspired against him to have a good talking with him. Is that what it says? To give him a good tongue lashing. Is that what it says? No. What's it say? Oh my goodness. Now, they want to kill him. But God showed him his destiny. You're like, now, what's the man become to do? Well, exactly. So now what are they trying to do to him? Now why are some of you all shocked when people treat you that way? Lord, take me out of here. You promised abundant life. Why is this happening? He's like, but I promised you. I showed you where I'm taking you. But God, don't you see what they're doing? And that's why I'm telling you, you're going to have to start setting your mind that you're going through. If you keep reacting to everything the enemy throws at you, you will be on a merry-go-round stuck in the muck and the mire. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. And so, so the enemy desires to kill you. But here's the key. What if, I want to challenge you this morning, we're looking at this as the word. What if you start looking into that pit as something that saved you instead of something that punished you? Amen. If they hadn't thrown him in that pit, they'd have killed him. That pit saved his life. That pit got him to his destiny. That pit was what got him to where God had called him to be to fulfill the, the destiny God had for him. Amen. But nothing about that pit looked good. Amen. Nothing about that pit screamed God all over. Him, holy, divine, and called, throw me in this pit. <laughs> Sell me into slavery. But God, you said. And the whole time, he kept his heart right. The whole time, he said, hey, I don't know what God's doing, but I trust my God. Amen. God showed me if it's God's will to be done, if it's not, I want to serve. I'm going to go through this with the right heart. I'm going to, no matter where God puts me, I'm going to make him look good. That was his heart. Look at Joseph everywhere he went. He went to Potiphar's house. I mean, he attracted everybody, including the wrong woman. Everybody liked him. She, when she couldn't have him, she got him thrown in jail. Then he did all the right things in there and they forgot about him there. Boy, talk about getting the fence. I saved your life and you left me down here to rot. No, he went through it with the right heart. I mean, time and time again, he had every opportunity to be offended. He had every opportunity to say, God, what are you doing? And we're going to look where finally... Someone recognized the Spirit of God within him because God had been growing it in him. See, he was pretty proud and boastful before he got thrown into that pit. So how do you know that? Because he went bragging and telling everybody how they were going to bow down to him. Yeah. So he had to go through some things before he could get to his destiny. Come on now. Amen. And if he hadn't went through them, he would have never got to be. He ended up over all of Egypt. He ended up saving his whole nation and saving his family. He saved a nation because he was willing to go through the pit. And he ended up in the palace. But today, everybody wants to go straight to the palace and skip the pit. But they never grow up. And we, the church has raised a group of people that believe they can actually sidestep the pit. I'm going to tell you, you can't ever sidestep the pit. The pit is where you grow. The pit is where what prepares you to fulfill your destiny. 
this morning just came to me, this, our vision of our house is fulfilling your destiny. I hope some of you don't feel like this is the pit. But. <laughs> yeah. Moving along. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come therefore, and let us slay him, and cast him into some pit. And we will say, Some evil beast has devoured him, and we shall see what shall become of him. And then verse 24, And they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty, and there was no water in it. So guess what? He's going to sit down there and die. That's what it looks like, doesn't it? Now, you know, you have to ask yourself, what would your faith level be right about now? Well, let's just be honest. Everybody's heard the story in here, I think. You've been hearing it since you were little. But how many have actually applied it to your life that say God sometimes determines some perseverance? Some kind of God sometimes desires some faith. How many know it's blind faith? He has a promise of where he's going, but it sure doesn't look like he's ever going to get there. And yet he constantly serves God along the way. And he keeps letting God hone him. I guarantee he was a very, the Bible, we know he was, because the Bible says he was a very humble and wise and submitted man, full of the Spirit of God, by the time he got to the palace. That means God did something in him. Come on. You say, where does that say that? Well, jump on over, Nick. To verse 40, Genesis 41, verse 38. It says, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so deceit and wise as thou art. Oh my goodness. How many want that said about you? Then guess what you're probably going to have to do? Go through something. <laughs> Going to have to get grown up a little bit. You know, everybody likes these little neat shit sayings, you know, God's going to make you a diamond. I even gave that prophetic word to someone before until they find out it's kind of causes, you know, even the same breath God had me telling you how you make a diamond, right? <laughs> Pressure. <laughs> you know, and that all sounds fine and dandy until the pressure's on. You're like, and they don't realize how long does it take to make a diamond. <laughs> it can take a little while. But you know what you got to do? You got to go through with the right heart. And you got to persevere. God's going to send you here, here, and here. Everybody likes to hear the prophetic words, what God's going to do with them when they start reaching their destiny. Nobody wants to hear the words that you're going to have to go through this or through that. Everybody today, we see it. We want to jump around. <laughs> Greater is he that's within me than he that's in the world. I'm not going through that. Bless God. Don't go over here. <laughs> no weapon formed against me shall prosper. <laughs> and the whole time God's going, and who do you think you're full of? <laughs> Just go through it. Persevere. Overcome. Bible said, Blessed are they that overcome, for they shall inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. Didn't say, Blessed are those that skip around it. <laughs> <laughs> you say, I don't like this level of teaching, Pastor. <laughs> Tough luck. God wants you to grow up. He's got a destiny only you. What if Joseph had said, I'm not going. I am done playing. I've been in the pit. I've been in prison. Had some woman lie about me. I told her dreams. They left me in here. Y'all want to talk to me? Talk to my agent. <laughs> you say that wouldn't happen. But it might today. But see, you got to make your mind up, I'm going through. You can count every wrong ever done to you, and all it's going to do is keep you bound in whatever pitch you're in. Or you can start counting what God's done for you already and applying the Word of God and start walking it out. And get some perseverance. I mean, sometimes you just got to, you, you, you just got to, 
you just got to man up, lack for a better word. Nobody wants to talk about that today. And say, you know what? <laughs> you want to go, we'll go. You want to dance, we'll dance. Maybe I'm talking words you don't recognize this morning, but I'm telling you, it's something that happens in your spirit when you flip that switch. When you go, you want to dance? We'll dance. Well, I'm coming through. <laughs> You're in my way. You might as well get out of it because I'm coming through it. See, some of you are starting to relate this morning. See, something happens when you start realizing that really is, when you realize that he really is bigger inside you than whatever that mountain is in front of you. The Bible says, stand this mountain and be thou removed. That means you're looking at that pit. You're looking at it dead on, and you're saying, you want to go? We'll go. You want to dance? We'll dance. I'm coming through you whether you like it or not. You keep going around the mountain, guess what? You'll just keep circling. It'll be the same problem over and over and over and over. And that's where most people have found themselves out today. Oh, I got around that. Oh, man, I'm still here. Oh, I got around that. Oh, I'm still here. And it's not going to happen until you say, you know what? I'm coming through you, man. <laughs> Me and you. It's on. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, if most of you knew what was on the other side of that thing, was on the other side of that pit, you would have done been through that mountain. Amen. If most of you knew what God had for you on the other side, you would still be over here trying to dance your way around it. You'd be tearing that thing out with your bare hands, going, you better let me in. <laughs> you ain't keeping me from that. But guess what? It, it takes some perseverance. It takes some grit. It takes some faith. Come on. You're not gonna get a you're not gonna get her a trophy in heaven just for trying. <laughs> you may make it in if you actually apply the blood, but you're not gonna get a trophy just for trying. Moving along. So as thou shalt beat over my house according to thy word, shall all the people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. What a promotion for Joseph. According to his word, the man that kept his heart right, the man that went through, it was as he spoke it would be so. Now everyone is hanging on his words, literally. Everyone is paying attention to what he has to say. Because he didn't take the easy way out. He saved a whole nation. I want to tell you sometimes, what God has for some of you on the other side is bigger than you can even think. He really had no, he was just thinking about <laughs> little in and around his family when God probably gave him that dream. He probably didn't really realize that he was really going to save a whole nation. Mm -hmm. Even whenever he was telling his brothers about it, he didn't understand the whole depth of what he was saying. And some of you enemies really trying hard to get you hung up in the pit this morning, today, this week, this year. Because he is scared to death you're going to wake up and realize just who you are in Christ. He's scared to death that you're going to say, you know what? You've been whipping me like an old wet dog. <laughs> and I've had just enough. I'm coming up out. The Bible says he lift our feet up out of miry clay and put us on solid ground. That means that that pit can't hold me. That means that it can't have no restraints on me. And I'm going to pick my feet up. I'm going to shake it off. And I'm going to come through. My feet, my, my footing is now on solid ground. Because the Bible says so. You may feel like you're stuck in miry clay. But if you apply the word of God, your feet will come up out of there. And you'll be, you'll have a sure footing. And you'll say, now, now you can say, I know some of you will get, now you can say, let's dance. You want to dance? I'm no longer your whipping post, devil. I'm here to whip you. And I've already won. Because greater is he that's within me than he is within the world. And you're going to set your face like flint. That means you're going to take some hits, but every hit's going to spark something inside you that causes the fire of God to burn even brighter and stronger inside you. Instead of causing it to beat you down, it will cause you to come up. That's what it means when you set your face like flint. 
That means that you got your person, when your face set like Flint, that means your face is set. Your, right, your game face is on. <laughs> you know, you sing that old song, hit me with your best shot. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'll take that. Now get ready. I'm coming. <laughs> But that means you got to see the other side. You can't keep looking at the pit. The only way you get through the pit is to start looking at the other side. Are y'all listening this morning? Yeah. The only way you're going to get through the pit is if you start looking at the other side. As long as you're looking down, you're going to be in it from here on out. When you start looking at the other side of it, you'll start coming through it. You say, what's on the other side? Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Turn to the bottom of the next one. You can save the other reading for home. You know, and some of people would say, that's great. But at least Joseph knew what his destiny was. You know, some of you here in my sport say, that's all great. But at least he knew what he was fighting for. I don't even know what the point of all this mess is. <laughs> you, you've done a real great job encouraging everybody else, Pastor, but I just don't know. Well, sometimes you just got to stand for the Lord and go through the fire. Sometimes you just got to say, you know what, God? I don't understand it, but I've decided I'm going to serve you and nothing else is going to deter me. Daniel chapter 3 verse 1. Actually verse 5. For time's sake. Says you fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king set up. And whoso falleth not down and worship the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. So Nebuchadnezzar set up or an image of himself and he wanted everybody to worship him. And don't be surprised if some of this crazy nonsense don't start coming back in our day and time in just different ways. But, you know, and then, now these three boys have got to make their mind up who they're going to serve. <coughs> who are they going to worship? Are they going to follow the Word of God? Or are they going to do what the whole nation's doing? what the whole culture is doing. See, today we, we are so culture sensitive that the whole everybody just goes along with the culture because they don't want to offend nobody. I'm telling you, it's coming a time in this culture, you're going to choose to either follow the Word of God or you're going to, and you're going to have to start going against some culture because culture cultures done lost their mind. That doesn't mean we don't love them. We want to save them. Amen. But I'm going to show you right here. When you take a stand for the living God, that's how you save them. When you let them see who your God really is and you're willing to risk it all, when you go through it instead of trying to get around it, that's when people come to Jesus. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Turn over to verse 12. It says, There are certain Jews... Whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So they got this tattletale guy. Anybody here ever had somebody try to get them in trouble? Especially when it comes to things of God on your workplace. I mean, they were up, they were set up over stuff. They had a good position. They had a good job. And somebody's going and trying to stir it up and get them in trouble. And then Nebuchadnezzar, in his mercy, <laughs> well, what's it say there? Rage and, fury. Rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. So, was he happy? No, they've angered their boss. They've angered the one to decide whether they live or die if they eat or starve. And he's not just a little bit. He's enraged. How dare you defy me? 
<laughs> Come over here. We're going to have a talk. And you're not going to like it. Do as I say. And they say, hey, we love Jesus, brother. I'm sorry you're upset, but I love God. I'm going to follow him. Take your best shot. I'm coming through you. I'm not going to try to weasel my way out of it. I'm not going to try to talk to you and tell you how this way or that way. I'm just telling you this is where I'm standing. If you want to dance, we'll dance. You'll just dance with my Jesus. Amen. Come on now. Amen. And then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up. So he's like, you know, he, he's just furiated. He jumped down to verse 15, the next part where I've got highlights. said, but if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God shall deliver you out of my hands? Now listen, some have tried to turn this around. I believe he's mocking them right now. I believe he's mocking their God. Say, listen, if you don't serve me, that very hour, I've had it with you. I'll show you who your boss is. You are done. I had one guy one time, and I don't always, I don't encourage this, and he was my boss. He was over the whole casting department at a Doe Run lead smelter. And he didn't like that I was a man of God. He was running from God. And he said, if you don't change, I'm going to fire you. I've been building the case on you. I said, you ain't got the authority to fire me. He said, you don't you know who I am? I said, yeah. I said, but all authority comes from Jesus, so take your best shot. <laughs> you know, he never did get me fired. <laughs> he tried. Now, that was dumb of me to say that. I was young and learning, but I had faith in who my God was, and guess what? My God spared me. Come on, are you with me? Yeah. And so they go on down here. Said, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, that he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Now they had faith that God would take them, set them free, but they went ahead and told him, now see, this is what the attitude it takes to go through. I want you to pay attention. They said, but even if he don't, he's still God, and we're not going to serve you, even if it costs us everything. Amen. And I'm here to tell you, that is the attitude it takes to go through the pit, to go through the fire. God, I'm going to do it your way. I'm going to believe you're going to set me free, but if you don't, there is heaven to gain and a hell to lose. Amen. And I'm going to do it your way no matter what. Yeah. That's how you get through. Yeah. Come on, are you with me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. Was he happy? <laughs> anybody ever see anybody full of fury? Yeah. I mean, like just crazy mad, slobbering at the mouth, eyes raging, you know, bugs, eyes bugged out, you know, veins popping. Rabbit. He just <coughs> furious. He, he probably wanted to tear him apart with his bare hands. How dare you insult me? And the form of his vision was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spoke and commanded they should heat the furnace 170 times more than it was, was to be heated. So... Not only was the furnace, listen, how many know a furnace kills you no matter what? Yeah. Yeah. But he said, well, you, uh, I'll show you, nobody's saving you. And sometimes right now you may feel like somebody has that same agenda against you, something you're going through. Seven, eight, seven times, that's it. I'm gonna, you'll be nothing left of you. And in the natural, how many know that could be intimidating? Well, yeah. But they decided they was going through. Come on. Yeah. 
And he commanded the most mighty men that there were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Let me tell you. He intended on them to die. There was no other way around it. He didn't plan on them coming out. He didn't intend on changing his mind. He didn't intend on the nation worshiping God. He didn't intend on God getting the glory. And in themselves, they never once changed their, his mind. But all the things they said, you know what changed? You know what changed his mind is when they went through the fire. You sometimes you got to quit talking to the to the issue and talking to the peoples involved and start talking to God and start going through the fire. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. Sometimes you just got to say, hey, hey, you want to dance? We'll dance. My God is faithful. I'm coming through. I'm going to claim his word and I'm going to walk straight through this. You're not, they could have talked till they were blue in the face. They would not have changed that king's mind until they went through the fire. Sometimes you just got to quit trying to talk to that thing. And just go through the fire. See, it didn't get any easier for them, did it? Guess what it got? But I want you to know something. God was with them. They had to go through it. They didn't know the outcome, but they trusted God. How I many know they didn't know? Listen, by, by the words they said... We know that they didn't know for sure what was going to happen when they went to that fire, did they? No. They didn't know their destiny 100%, did they? No. They weren't like Joseph that had it promised him. And some of you are finding yourself, you don't know it, but you're going to need to trust God anyways and go through the fire. Come on, are you with me this morning? Hebrews 13, 5 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Some of you need to start realizing that no matter where you're at, you're not alone and God is with you. No matter what the fire looks like, no matter what the pit looks like, God is with you. He promised he'd never leave you nor forsake you, and he's going to be with you. And so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Now see, that's all fine and dandy to preach in some nice little church service until you find yourself in the pit somewhere. Till you find yourself in the fire somewhere. And all this stuff is coming around and now all of a sudden you say, hey, my God is faithful. He'll never leave me or forsake me. And I don't care what you say you can do to me. God is my helper. Now see, now we just went to the other level. Now we're going through something. But let me tell you, that Sunday morning, that Sunday morning faith, it won't take you through stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You gotta have that real deal stuff. Mm -hmm. right. You gotta have that real committed stuff. Come on, are you with me? Yes. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, I'm going through. I'm going through. And I'm not going alone. Jump on down to verse 23. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down to the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Now, I know everybody's heard this story and how they just stood there and danced around, but I want you to take note. When they were first thrown in, where did they end up at? In the fire. In the fire, but they, were, they fell down. It was looking pretty rough, wasn't it? But then let's take note of what happened. Verse 25, He answered, say, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. See, they got thrown down, and they were down and out. They didn't know what was going to happen, happen, but they trusted their God. Somebody picked them up. Yeah. I need you to recognize this this morning, church. This is good stuff. I know I'm doing a little teaching and preaching. Listen, they were down and out in the fire. Come on, are you all with me? They were down and out in the fire. They fell down. It 
look in the natural to be over. <coughs> they weren't up dancing right then going, oh, God is with us. They weren't having a, a Silas and Paul moment at that moment. They fell down. But Jesus came in, picked them up, and they saw walking around. Woo -woo. Jesus is with us now. He said he'd never leave me for, nor forsake me. He said he'd always cause me to triumph through Christ Jesus. Woo. He said he is my helper. I'm coming through the fire. He didn't come to take me out of the pit. He didn't come to take me out of the fire. He came to bring me through it. I don't always know why he's doing it. I don't even always know how if there's going to be a way out. But I know whatever it is. Romans 8, 28 says all things work together for good to love him that are called according to his purpose and I'm going through this thing I'm going to keep my heart right I'm going to be a man or a woman of God and I know I'm going through the pit I know I'm going through the fire Amen. but let me tell you if your heart ain't right you ain't going through the fire or the pit you're going through something else it's called the effects of sin yeah. big smile if you're living sinful and doing whatever you want that ain't a pit you're in it, well, it is a pit, but it ain't a God-ordained pit. Get out of that mess. Pick yourself. You're, now, you're, now you're in the... <laughs> oh, Holy Ghost. Now you're the prodigal son. <laughs> now you're wiring over there in another pit called the hog pit. <laughs> and you found yourself over in a pig pit going, Man, it was so good when I was really serving God. He said, Well, pick yourself up and get back to your father's house because it's still that good over there. Amen. big smile. <laughs> Come on, are you with me? Yeah. Moving along. we got one more guy to look at. Turn to verse 28, though. Let's finish with Daniel. Then Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said, Blessed be the, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him. And have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own. Therefore I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces. And their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other god to deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. See, through the fire comes promotion. God will promote you through the fire. And once again, we see going through this, our whole nation was saved, do we not? Yeah. I'm here to tell you, these things that God's put in your life, they're growing stones. Some of you say, well, I'm in a rut, Pastor. You know what a rut is? It's a grave with both ends dug out of it. You know what a pit can feel like? A grave. But you know what? It can either be a stepping stone or it can be a tombstone. You get to decide by how you respond to it. Come on now. Amen. Even when people plot against you and all seems lost, God is faithful. Don't look in the seen realm. Look in the unseen realm. How many know that people are going to plot against you? Do we not just see that all through the Word of God? Then why are some of you so shocked when the enemy still does that today? Why do you give him so much credit like he's able to actually deter the promises of God in your life? Why not just realize that God can really take you through that fire? He can take you through that pit and he can bring glory to his name. Quit giving the enemy so much credit. Just make your mind up. I'm going through this. You know, most of you, he's so slick though because he don't just hit us in the face. He wears us down and gets us all confused and all this stuff. But mostly, if I came up and I took a swing at you, you ain't going to stand there and let me get you a second time. <laughs> you know, you got me once. You ain't getting me again. But the devil will just sit there like, I don't know why. I guess I'm just going to go through it. And all of a sudden, you realize who you are. I said, no, I'm going through it. <laughs> and you're getting out of my way. And I may have to be in the fire, 
But I ain't got to be miserable in it. Because Jesus is here with me, and we're going to get up and have us a party, and we're going to make everybody know who he is. Come on. Every place that Joseph was, God was glorified. When he was in a pit, he was glorified. When he was in Potiphar's house, God was glorified. When he was in jail, God was glorified. Amen. Daniel chapter 6, verse 1, verse 3. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. See, Christ-like attributes bring promotion. The more we start acting like the Lord, the more it will cause us to be promoted in this time, in this world. Verse 5 says, Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we fight it against him concerning the law of his God. See, this will happen in today's world. You know, wouldn't that be such a good problem? Now, Daniel was a human man. Even before Christ came, we had the grace that enables us. And the only thing they knew they were going to be able to find against him was something against God. They weren't going to find him slipping up in anything else. Wow. Amen? And how much more should that be said? If you want to talk about getting through some things, we're going to have to start having these kind of attributes. Because in these last days, they're going to start looking at ways they can prosecute you that goes against the Word of God. There's a, I, I, I don't watch the show, but John Revere had sent me some things, and I guess there's some show called Fixer Upper or something, and the, the couple on there are Christians. It's made national news now. He sent it a little while back, and the church they go to preaches that homosexuality is a sin, and God can deliver you from it and save you. Well... They've twisted the doctor all up on national TV, and now they're prosecuting the show, and because you know, and trying to take them off and sue them because they've assaulted our national TV, and every you can't watch anything anymore. They're having some kind of homosexuality in every show, and you know, how many know the church has just let that happen? Yeah. And they're afraid to offend anybody, so they don't say nothing. But you know, so now they found something against them, and they're going through a trial. How I many know God can use that for his glory if the church will be the church? Yeah. And we should support them. So, jumping on down, verse 14 for time's sake. Then it, so they, they, they went looking for something to tri trick him up. Why are so everybody so surprised that the enemy is looking? The Bible says, what, what did he tell us he came to do? Yeah. Still kill and destroy. So why are you all so shocked when he tries to do that? Why do you give him so much power and authority? The devil's after me. He's going to get me. Instead of saying, you know what? <laughs> you brought a knife to a gunfight, buddy. <laughs> I know I'm in rare form today. <laughs> you brought a knife to a gunfight. <laughs> you you want to dance? We'll dance. I'm coming through you. God's going to get the glory in the end. Amen. I know you came to steal, kill, and destroy, and God says, I came, you may have life and have it more abundantly, and you just gave me a bigger stage to show the whole world just how big my God is. Amen. Come on. Instead of going, oh, the devil's after me. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm after you. I'm going to get you. <laughs> You're going to lay in that pit and just die there with that attitude. Come on. You ought to get up. So the king went when he heard these words was sore displeased with himself. See, this guy loved Daniel. And he set his heart on Daniel to deliver him and he labored to the going down of the sun to deliver him. See, he was trying to find a way out of something he had said. Why? Because God had caused Daniel to grow with wisdom and favor with God and man, even unsaved men. And these men assembled unto the king and said unto him, the king, Know our king the law of the Medes and the Persians, that no decree nor statute which the king established may be changed. And then uh, the king went ahead and he talked to Daniel and uh, brought Daniel and cast him into the lion's den, verse 16. 
And the king said, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. Now here was a lost man encouraging and prophesying to Daniel. How many know if you'll live right, it'll have effect on those around you? Now this guy had set up people to worship the wrong gods or else, but he knew he had made a mess. I mean, they'll start knowing they made a mess. And he said, listen, your God is going to protect you. And so then it says in, in verse 18, the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him and his sleep went from him. So these guys that admit to cause Daniel all this harm, they're getting some attention now, but I wouldn't really call it good. But see, Daniel didn't really know all that. You don't always know what God's doing behind the scenes when all these people uh, come and, and, and the enemy uses it. Because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood or principality and power. we got to realize their souls and they need saved. Like I've been preaching. But you don't ever know what God... <laughs> you know, the enemy's plans don't work when we keep our hearts right and we do it God's way and we're deciding that we're going through. Was it working out so well for these guys? No. <laughs> I mean, the whole palace is quiet. <laughs> 